Hey, 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 time to shine today, varsity squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I've waited like 48 days to get my boy Aaron Houghton on. Um, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal person that his mindset, like from what I've vetted out from him, is something that I, I need to implement into my life, to take a step back, to really – analyze, if you will, lack of a better term, like where I'm at. And with his founders first system, you're going to be treated to a plethora. And yes, I use that favorite word everyone rips on me about the plethora of knowledge nuggets that's going to help you level up your life. It says here in his bio, he's 11 time founder, an entrepreneur advocate, a husband, and probably most important, a dad. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Aaron on here for an interview. Again, I've been stoked to, to have this. It's been almost two months because we're in day 7,000 of quarantine here. <laughs> but Aaron, if you could, please, I'm going to have you introduce yourself to the Time to Shine Today squad. But first, what is your favorite color and why? Uh, my favorite color is blue because I think that's what my favorite color is supposed to be as a man. And uh, I'm legally colorblind, so I couldn't <laughs> really? tell you whether it's good looking or not. <laughs> Maybe I should have asked that first. I'm going to start putting that in my discovery. Are you colorblind? No. There's a reason to my madness on that um, with, with regards to the color of the, uh, the your little um, audiogram, if you will. If you look at my podcast, the, the little yeah. line is always the person's favorite color. That's my secret. Perfect. Personal. That's the first time I've said that in over 140 interviews. So, Big breakthroughs today. I love it. All right. <laughs> time. So let's get to the origins of you, Aaron. Let's take a step back mm -hmm. before you um, started the Founders First uh, system and then kind of get the origins and move forward, brother. Yeah. Scott, thanks for having me. This is really exciting. My background is, you know, I'm a, I'm a small town kid. Um, I was uh, in middle school and high school in Western North Carolina near Asheville and the beautiful mountains of North Carolina and uh, grew up in a town there with about 2000 people. And I think it's um, greatest notoriety. I remember the sign when we drove in and out of town said it was uh, a bird sanctuary, which I'm still not exactly sure what that means. There was not a cage around my hometown, but um, you know, it was one of these little small towns, I think struggling for significance in, in the world. And, and that's who I am. And that's who I was coming out as a kid from this small town. I got a, a great opportunity to go to UNC Chapel Hill and study computer science. And um, I took this hobby of being kind of a nerdy kid and trying to build things, you know, playing around with like taking lawnmowers apart and taking physical objects apart to then doing that with software and with computers and trying to take them apart and put them back together. Just really being a tinkerer, like I think so many people are in, in, in other categories. And um, I took that as, that was like my hobby as a high school student. You know, most kids are into probably more exciting things than that, but that's what I like to do. And I eventually figured out how to turn that into a business, honestly, because mowing lawns in the hot uh, Southern summer heat was brutal <laughs> and I have allergies and I couldn't breathe. It was a terrible way to make money. And I was like, oh, I could actually make, you know, $35 an hour putting computers together for people and building websites. Wow. So what transitioned that then kind of as an aha moment into Founders First to help people really kind of level up their journey? Yeah, you know, that became the beginning of this 20 year journey of me as a software entrepreneur. So building software to solve people's problems, uh, to solve my own problems. I, my first website I ever built actually was from my high school basketball coach who owned a bed and breakfast. And he had some challenges around getting tourists that lived mostly in Florida to come back up to North Carolina for the leaf season in the fall when the leaves changed color and he wanted to stay top of mind in front of them. And so I just built this website to solve his problem. I built software to solve other people's problems in different areas. And you know, that turned into a business. And so I became a software guy and a software company guy. I built 11 software companies over 20 years. Um, my most successful one to 50 million in revenue, 350 employees, offices all around the world. And through that process, just so much personal struggle and pain. As my businesses became more successful, I found my health and my happiness was on the exact opposite trajectory. It was <laughs> down and, and towards the ground. And uh, over time, I realized that what I really needed wasn't as much the, the tactical skills on how to build a business and launch a business and how to run a marketing campaign. Like I could go find those things. Those resources existed. You had to ask people questions but uh, to get those answers. But what I didn't have was like how to take care of myself in the midst of extreme pressure, extreme dynamism, extreme stress of, of running a company. And that's where I really struggled. And so I created Founders First System to help people with that problem, which I think it's hard to find the answer to. So if which, by the way, UNC Chapel Hill, like my most hated rival, 
kind of oh yeah I, i'm a bad boy from detroit <laughs> you know for Michigan the Pistons. State? no yeah. I, oh yeah i'm a sparty fan but yeah the, the detroit yeah. pistons played this guy michael jordan you know a lot yes you know what he, you, yeah. <laughs> so when, when you when you're talking about so you're taking kind of your personal experience and then helping people maybe level up so they're not having or if they're going to have to clear the hurdle that you're going to help them out with that is that correct then yeah you got it okay perfect so when you bring somebody in through the kind of the discovery process, what is your first, if you don't mind, kind of secret sauce to helping them find their blind spot? Yeah, so Founders First System is, is first and foremost a community of founders helping each other. So I think the first thing is really just awareness of what it costs to try and be successful. Um, and that's, that's something that I share with people a lot and I think maybe doesn't resonate always the first time. So I ask people to think about that. For like, what does it cost to try and be successful? And there's, there's two important parts of that. One is cost. Is it, people are like, oh, hang on, it costs, you have to pay money, money. to be successful? <laughs> well, there is money, yes, you may yeah, invest money in your business. So. <laughs> but what about time? What about impact on relationships? What about impact on your health, right? There's this right. model that a lot of people kind of fall accidentally into in life where you spend the first 80% of your life you know, selling your health and your time in order to try and make money. And then you spend the last 20% of your time, your life trying to buy back your health, which maybe doesn't work. And then you run out of time, right? We're too playing far that along game. into that bad path. Too far sense, along right? the game right. at the end. Yeah. And then the second part is the try and be successful, which is in the, in the high growth startup world that I've lived in, where we're trying to build scalable products and scale them to thousands and millions of users. There's so much risk and only about 5% of those companies actually have big exits in the end. So if it's wow. financial outcome or influence or success or changing the world that you want, there's a 5% success rate. So you're paying the cost definitely for a 5% chance at winning. It's kind of like a bad day in a casino sometimes. <laughs> so you actually kind of help them begin like, um, uh, like Stephen Covey might say, like uh, begin with the end in mind, kind of so they have that exit strategy. But during their journey, they're taking, I love your like little sabbatical video, by the way, people, you got to go to foundersfirstsystem.com and watch this two minute video about, you know, he talks about the uh, emotion, energy and health and physical body and how you need to consistently recharge those. So your mind is able to level up, you know, it's an easy way for me to say kind of level up, but you know, with beginning with the end in mind, it, is that first discovery process a question that you might ask them of what do you see your company when you exit or are you really getting started deep in the roots where they're at? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. So I want people to track both where they want to go as a business. And I think that's the discipline that's taught in most schools, most accelerators. If you just go to the internet and Google how to start a business, you know, like those are the pieces of like set your goals, set your plans, break it into pieces, you know, have good discipline have good grit, never give up, stay persistent, all sure. of those pieces around it. And I think all of those are still accurate. I, I add to that, track and quantify our own personal goals alongside that. So what are the things that I found? I'm, I'm over a thousand days in now, I started this in 2017, tracking every single day my happiness level on a one to 10 scale. And then I also track other activities that I participate in. Like, did I get a good hour with my family uninterrupted without, you know, a, a digital device bothering us? Did I, you know, get to go out and spend time in public? Did I get to maybe have a hike or go out into nature? Um, and so I, I track all of these things and they've been incredible for me. And so that's what this, uh, what Founders First System is kind of taken these discoveries I've had of track, not just the business metrics, but also the personal met, uh, metrics, health and happiness and make sure that those are moving in the right direction too. We know they can ebb and flow. We have a bad day at work as an entrepreneur. Sometimes sure. we have a, a great morning and a terrible afternoon and then a great evening, right? It can be really dynamic. Um, yet tracking if we're actually on the right path with happiness and health is incredible because we need to know how much we're spending in those categories. Um, I ask people in our workshops, um, if I promised you, you would make $5 million from your business, would you trade me right now five years off of your life? What about $10 million? What about 10 years off of the end of your life? Right. And people laugh and it's kind of a tricky question, but I think that's the reality of it. If you trade your health, you're just not going to get as much enjoyment uh, out of what you've created on the other side. And so that's Love the trade-off. No, so you're a techie guy. Is there a software you use to track this stuff for people, you know, from their health and energy, not their emotion, 
like I, myself, I'm a gratitude journal guy every single morning. It's the first thing I awesome. do, I, you right. know, I do yeah. it. I read a, I'm a God fearing man, but uh, you know, or God loving man. Um, you know, I read a book of Proverbs cause there's 31 books in Proverbs and basically it's a chapter a day. Right. So I do that. Oh, yeah. and what right. I'm grateful for. Right. Um, mm -hmm. is there a software program that, you know, founders first uses as you bring clients aboard? Yeah, you know, I'm a software guy, so of course we That's build software asking, to, right? to help track this. Yeah, so we've got a program for, you know, I mentioned the free community that we have, the Founders First community. Um, we've got a program called Peakability, so folks that come into the community, enjoy the conversation, get some value out of it, um, can choose to upgrade into this where we give them a huge digital training program that I've built over the last five years. And as part of that, we include software, which is a mobile app on iOS and Android, where you can track these things every single day. Oh, beautiful. And yeah, that discipline Put that in the is, show is notes, crucial. people, for sure. So if I'm out at a networking event, which here in South Florida, we're kind of starting allowed to do, um, you know, press and flush, meeting people, what kind of, you know, if I'm talking to someone one-on-one -on -one and I'm using the adage of one mouth and two ears for a reason, you know, I'm mm -hmm. listening and what kind of keywords am I listening for that would make them a good referral connection, introduction to Founders First? The, um, the thing I, I like to say is that, you know, it's, like the framework is perfect for anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur or who is an entrepreneur because it helps you build resilience so that you don't get yourself into a personal crisis. Like where this goes when it doesn't go well, uh, the statistics for folks like us as entrepreneurs are really, really, really bad. Uh, we've got 2x the rate of depression. We have 2x the rate of uh, suicide of the general population. We have 3x the rate of ADHD, or sorry, of uh, any type of substance abuse, 6x the rate of ADHD, and 11x the rate of bipolar disorder, wow. 11, 11 times, not 11% more. It's absolutely crazy. Times. So yeah, it's, wow. it's just wild what this, this entrepreneurial experience brings out in us, right? So um, yeah, I would, I would say that, you know, it's, you know, trying to avoid a crisis, right? So anybody who wants to, you know, chase a huge goal in their life, whether that's even entrepreneurial or not, where sure. they know that it's going to take an incredible amount of work, an incredible amount of effort, and they may have to put themselves second a lot of times to that goal. This system is to help them uh, balance out those two pieces so that they can be successful both personally and professionally. Love it. I can't wait to really dig into this within your community. So let's get in our uh, DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back into uh, maybe the 22-year-old Aaron. What kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on him to maybe help him shorten his learning curve with the knowledge that you have now, the wisdom you have now? Don't assume that your, your physical and mental resources are unlimited. That's, <laughs> that's what I would tell my 22-year-old uh, self. Um, I just assumed that I could you know, treat myself as poorly as possible in order to optimize my business and put my business first and that um, it would eventually deliver business success. And um, my experience with this was that my lowest point in running companies and being an entrepreneur was two years after I sold my company, my most successful business, we sold for $169 million to a public company. And I had enough money at that point to retire and my great grandkids probably to retire at this point. Sure. And, and then I find myself at my lowest point in my entire life because all of these habits along the way of putting myself last caught up to me. The acquirer yeah. bought my company they didn't buy all the bad habits. I got to keep all of those and I get to keep them forever. And sure. so that, that cost, um, it was just something that blindsided me. Yeah. It can kind of shave the years off your life. If you're not really taking care of yourself. I mean, that's where we get this temple. You got to take care of it. And, uh, when I was young, I was all about that. And then now, you know, or, or then I kind of made money as printing money with the real estate market in the early 2000s. And I was finding Burger King wrappers and Wendy's wrappers in my floorboard of my car. You know, because I was serving <laughs> clients and I was like, but not serving myself. So yeah, I think yeah. that Founders First really will help to keep you on board with that. So when you bring somebody on, Aaron, when you're kind of, again, back in the discovery process, is there, or even on down the road as you're helping companies level up and building the software for them, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? I think the number one question we need to be asking each other as, as entrepreneurs is um, what's our greatest challenge right now? And that's what we need to be sharing with other people. I think there's just too much. Um, there's, 
you know, it takes a lot of ego to become an entrepreneur, right? You've got to have yeah. confidence that you can beat these incredible odds, right? right. Um, and with that can come this, and I think the general narrative around entrepreneurship too supports this, which is that we should always talk about what's going great. And, you know, how, you know, how are things, man? How, how's the business? Oh, everything's great. You know, gosh, we're just killing it, right? Revenue's up, got a new client the other day. What's sure. the reality, right, behind that, right? Well, lost right. a big client the other day too, <laughs> so maybe 10 times as big as the one that, that we meant to get. Uh, revenue yeah. is up, but, you know, margins are down and we're losing money on every order because we've got a supply chain problem, right? Or whatever's <laughs> right. behind the scenes. Or personally, I'm struggling, you know, right. I'm, I'm taking prescription meds to fall asleep at night and I find myself so anxious during the day that I can't motivate my team anymore like I used to be able to. So um, those are the things that come up in, in real life. And I, I think just opening the door to these problems with each other yeah. and just being wide open. It's a, it's a practice that I've used the last three, four years of my life of just, you know what, I'm going to tell people what my biggest struggle, my biggest challenge is right now. And just let them know because people can't help you if they don't know what your biggest challenge and your biggest struggle area is. And if you gloss it over with all this exciting kind of fake, everything's great stuff, then no right. one knows how to help you. Right. A lot of people take that imposter syndrome or fake it till you make it kind of thing when really you're not really doing yourself any good service. I mean, I, I, again, I was a, you know, really a product of that. And it's funny that you said what you just said that, you know, I just, you know, I'm into the Stoics and I'm digging into Diogenes right now. And he was like, you know, uh, not only are you battling with another person that you're trying to beat on the corporate ladder or entrepreneur if you're battling like you know I've been a real estate agent for 22 years you know you're battling another agent there's actually cells in your body that are battling each other to take <laughs> over you know what you just said right there it's like there is a battle no matter what even the person like you said you know about taking prescription meds to go to sleep that's a battle within your body that you've mm -hmm. got to be cognitive of you know so I'm glad that you said that and I really 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 appreciate it so you've you've accomplished a ton. I mean, you said you sold a company for hundred, almost 170 mil, which, you know, fantastic. And you, you, you've started, you know, 11 different companies, 12 different companies. What is the BIG, the big thing that Aaron really wants to accomplish? I, I want to fundamentally change the experience for a million entrepreneurs and founders across the world. Wow. Um, to make that story a little bit easier for them. And also because humanity relies on entrepreneurs to change the world. And if they burn out on their first company or their second company, or they lose their ability to be creative, or if they unfortunately lose years off their lives because of the struggle, then um, their journey is so much less enjoyable and the world suffers because of that and all oh, of humanity. That is huge, man. You hear that squad he wants to help a million entrepreneurs level up because you know we, he, he talked earlier about the burnout, like maybe 5% of businesses that really start actually see it through to the end. And if you've joined with somebody like Founders First, I'm jumping in the community today. You know, it says it's free. That's the best price of all. So see where that'll take us, right? So Aaron, let's talk about your dash real quick. The uh, we, uh, Time to Shine Today, the dash to me is really kind of the most important thing. And that's that little line in between your life date and death date. How that little dash, how do you want your dash remembered? I, I understand that you wanted the hundred thousand or a hundred, sorry, a million entrepreneurs to really level up, but is mm -hmm. there anything else that you want included in that legacy, that dash? Yeah. I, I want to be remembered as somebody who was tough enough to be vulnerable, who was, who had that, uh, that beginner's mindset. And this is something that I constantly struggle with. So that's why I go to it, not because I'm great at it, but, but because it's my struggle and, and my journey and how I want to finish my life and, and leave a legacy. So I want to be remembered as a person that had a, a great impact on so many entrepreneurs to make their journey easier. But um, I really want to be remembered as somebody who was able to share where I suffer first so that others can share where they need help. I love that. It's like, basically, by doing that, but you said tough enough to be vulnerable, that means you're still asking for help correct? Me and Absolutely. Vulnerable. So like, you know, we say, I just my last chapter I just wrote in, in the book is called Get Your Asking Gear. And it was shared with me by um, uh, Leah Woodford, you might even know her through uh, Casey Haston. But it's a it, and I kind of wrote that like, I want to learn, you know, to be a little bit more vulnerable with myself as well, instead of thinking because I again, entrepreneurship, you mentioned it egos involved. So a lot of times you don't reach out, reach out for that, which thank, thank you so, so much for saying that. So what do you feel then is your definition of a life well lived? 
taking the best care I can of my mind and body so that I could help others. It's that analogy of, you know, uh, when you're on an airplane and put your oxygen mask on first before helping others, right? It's always such a funny statement when you listen to it. It's like, really? That, that makes me a jerk, right? Like if Selfish, I don't help the person right? next to me first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. But when you actually dig into the equation behind that, right, yeah. you can help a hundred people put their masks on. If you put your mask on first, it's so you true. can have incredible impact. It is so true, Aaron. Like you say that a lot of people look at it as selfish, but even if you look up the utter definition of selfish, it's, you know, putting yourself kind of first to be able to service and help others. You know, that's really, it's, it's dug in. You have to. You know, what good it's empowerment. Are you? Yeah. Uh, right. Exactly. Empowerment. So as we wind ourselves down just a little bit here, Aaron, I got my, what's called leveling up lightning round. There's five or six questions. You and I could talk for 15, 20 minutes, but due to kind time constraints and my, you know, crazy producer over here. He's like, no, nope, five seconds. And they're super easy. No explanation. Just fire away. You ready? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Aaron, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Oh, man. Um, I got this from a mentor a couple years ago. Um, for someone who's intense and competitive like me, he said, step away from the computer, take a deep breath, make a hot glass of chamomile tea. It works. <laughs> love it. I love it. Chamomile is my jam at night, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Share, one of, share um, one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Morning routine every day, 30 minutes for myself, starting at calm before I start my day, breath work, movement, visualization, gratitude journaling, like you said, big time. Love it. Start at calm before you start your day. Wow. So other than, now let's, let's go to not what you're reading now, not what the flavor of the month is to read. What is that go-to book? Like mine's two of them. I like uh, Andy Andrews, The Traveler's Gift or Bob Berg's The Go-Giver. I love them because they're kind of both parable like mm -hmm. I love that those are my two that if you came to me and said Fergie man you know I, I'm kind of crazy I'm lost I'm out there I hand those two to you and said listen these will help you out what is your book yeah it's it's uh, no one's ever heard of it it's called the nature fix by Florence Williams and it's the physical proven science and research behind why time and nature reduces our stress level reduces our cortisol levels reduces our blood pressure reduces pulse rate it's actually been proven by scientists and it's the science behind why nature fixes our minds and our bodies for us it's truly incredible beautiful awesome what is your most commonly used emoji when you're texting you know although at 39 years old i am technically a millennial I'm not an emoji guy. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I maybe throw that double high five, but that's about it. brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably the thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if you could be one age for the rest of your life and you can't say the age you are now, there's got to be another age. Like mine's 28 to 30. Mm -hmm. What would it be? Yeah. My twenties were brutal because again, I was, I was trading my health for success. So I was making a lot of money and I was miserable in a lot of ways. So Probably 33. 33 is my lucky number. It's on my basketball jersey when I play hoops. And uh, I, I felt great. Yep. I, I was finally starting to turn that corner on good habits in life. Beautiful. What's your favorite uh, charity and or organization you like to give your time and or money to? So I've been on the board the last year of a nonprofit called Entrepreneurs Organization. It's global. It has 16,000 uh, entrepreneur founders in it. And uh, it's a nonprofit. It's based out of Washington, D.C. in the U.S. And uh, it, it's absolutely incredible. Changing Beautiful. the lives for entrepreneurs. Last question. It's kind of a toughie there. What's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Oh, man. 90s. 90s? Yeah. All right. Seattle That's grunge. What, I was just going to say, you kind of rolled out of the big hair, don't care. Nirvana, <laughs> Pearl Jam, Soundgarden. Yeah, 90s is a good time. I'm, right into dark I'm a product, loud, yeah. yeah. I'm a product of the 80s, so it's kind of the 80s. But I'll tell you what, I put on the iHeartRadio 70s station, you know, in the background, like when I'm jamming, it kind of brings back memories of my late mom. So it's good stuff. Hey, yeah, absolutely. how can we find you, brother? In the Founders First community. So I'd love to share my story with founders. I respond to every post in there because I created this community for people like me. It's like my therapy. We've got hundreds and hundreds of founders in the group. So Founders First community, search for it in the app store on your smartphone or go to founders, uh, foundersfirstsystem.com and click on the community link. Beautiful. And I'm going to put all of that in the show notes. So Aaron, last thing, leave one last knowledge nugget you want to leave the Time to Shine Today squad that they can use, internalize, and take action on. Now, entrepreneurs, take care of each other so that we can create the incredible future that we know we all deserve. Wow. You guys, we just got basically a free masterclass by my friend Aaron today. Um, he, he really emphasizes don't assume 
Your physical and mental resources are unlimited. Take care every step of the way. You know, ask yourself, what's your greatest challenge? Don't just talk to people and tell them what's going great, especially other fellow entrepreneurs, because people have an innate ability to want to help. You know, join the Founders First system. There's entrepreneurs in there that will help. Aaron just said, and I'm holding him to it, he responds to people's, uh, you know, posts that he has. You know, he, he, he builds teams to help other level up, help solve their problems. He's built 12 companies. He's built this community of founders to help people. I have just, you know, I got to show it if we're on YouTube. This is just notes, just up the yang, man. Um, you know, track and quantify your personal goals. And then we got to look out at the peak ability as well um, in, in, into that. So Aaron, I really appreciate you coming on. You've been gracious with your time. You level up your health. You level up your wealth. And we appreciate you coming on, brother. Thank you so, so much. Scott, thanks so much for having me. This has been great. Thanks, brother.